So now we're going to make a database. We're going to use SQLite Browser. Hopefully you've downloaded it so you can follow along. And I've got this handout, this basic database handout that saves you from having to type all these things. So bring that up in your web browser. And so that gives you all of the commands that I'm going to type now. Um, and so you could pull them out of the uh, either the web page or the uh, um, you can pull them out of the slides, or you can pull them out of that uh, out of that. So I'm going to bring up the database browser here. Database browser. Now the thing that's going to happen, you'll see this happen on my desktop. I'm going to make a new database, and you have to store it somewhere. And so I'm going to put it on my desktop, and I'm going to call it uh, py4e fun. And so we should see a new file on my database right there, py4e fun. Now that's a file that you don't want to edit with a text editor or anything like that. This is um, a, a database that you're, this, this is a file that's to be read by SQLite browser and nothing else. Okay, so we're going to create a table and I'm going to make a, a table called users uh, with a column called name that's a text and a column called email. So I'm going to, it's already asking me to make a, a table. I'm going to call this users and I'm going to add a field that is called name and I'm going to add a text and I'm going to add another field called email and I'm going to make that be text. Now the key thing here is, is we are in effect making columns and rendering an opinion as to exactly what that column is supposed to be used for and we're not allowed to violate that. It's not like, oh, we'll do whatever you want because the database is optimizing its storage based on our in a, a contract that we're, we're effectively making the contract ourselves. We could make these columns anything we wanted, but we're just going to, we have to, we're going to contract with ourselves. And you can see it's kind of small here. You can see there's a create table and that's on the slide. And that's the, the, the SQL way of doing that. This user interface is just helping us write SQL. So now I'm going to just say OK, and if you take a look, you can see that I now have a table users. And I can look at my database structure, the table users, and away we go. And so, so now that's, that is creating it, and like I said, here in the slides is the create statement, or um, on the web page, there's the create statement that could have done it. Now, we can insert some data. Um, Let's add a new record to this database users, and we'll call this guy uh, uh, name Charles Csev at umish.edu. So now we have a record. So it's kind of like a, a database, a, a spreadsheet. Now that's not the SQL way to do it. There's SQL sort of going on in the background, but if we really want to do this using SQL, we're going to use the insert statement. And the insert statement looks like this. The SQL syntax sometimes has extra words. Insert into is actually an S to L SQL keywords. The name of a table, the columns, and then the word values, and then one-to-one -one correspondence between the values and in parentheses. So it looks kind of like a, a tuple in uh, Python, but we're nowhere near Python right now. Okay, and so uh, that's what we're going to do, and so I'm going to grab this Kristen, and I'm going to go over here to my SQLite browser and say S execute SQL. So now I can say paste that in and then hit this little run button, and that's going to submit the SQL to SQLite and then update that file, and it says query executed successfully, and away we go. So if I go back now and I look at the data, I see that there's two, two things in here. And now I can actually insert all the rest of these. Let's go back to my little bit of stuff here. Let's put all these other rows in. It turns out that if I go into the execute SQL and I want to do more than one, more than one command at a time, I can put a semicolon at the end of each one of these things and then I can run them all four. That all at the same time. I mean, one after another actually is what's going on here. So boom, boom, boom. And I take a look at the data and look, I've got all those things in there. Now, 
eventually, the thing that's going to generate that SQL is a program, not us. This is we're being the database administrator, so we're sort of doing things manually. Um, once things get going, you write programs, do that insert over and over and over again in Python or a web language like PHP or something like that. And so that is the insert. Now we can get rid of data. And so I'm going to say delete from, that's the keyword, users is the name of a table, where is a where clause. We'll have lots of where clauses in SQL, which is, it's not like an if, it, in effect the delete is going towards the whole table and being turned on and off by this where clause. So delete from users, if you didn't put the where clause on, will actually delete all the rows. But where Ted equals, uh, email equals Ted at umich.edu, well, that one is going to make it so it only applies to those, to the rows that where that is true. So I'm going to go over here in SQL, and I'm going to say delete from users where email equals ted at umich.edu, and then I'm going to run it. Because it's only one, I don't need a semicolon at the end of it. And now if I go back and I look at the data, ted is gone. Okay. Update. So the update says updates keyword, users is the name of the table, set is a keyword, and then this is column equals new value, and then a where clause. Again, this update, if we didn't have a where clause, would change every row in the table. And so where email equals csev at umesh.edu. Oh, I got to change that because I already got the name to be Charles. So you see the name is already Charles. So I'll just ex execute here. Make this be Chuck so we see it. And then I run it, and then you take a look at the data, and it's changed. That's it. That's an update statement. We're doing, you're doing great. You're doing great. And so, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we retrieve data. Now, this is the select statement, select, star, you have a list of columns, and star means all columns, from is a keyword, and then the name of a table. So this select star from users is the kind of thing you type all the time. As a matter of fact, it's what SQLite Browser is doing internally to cause this to happen, but we can do it by hand by saying select star from users, and then run it. And so then we get a little record set that is those four records that are sitting there. We can also throw a where clause on the end of it. So we say select star from users, where email equals csev at umich.edu, and that, again, the select star from users goes at the whole table, and the where clause goes at the whole table, and then filters out all of the things except one record. So the where clause is send it to the table, but then filter based on, on whatever, and so it, it, uh, it only shows us that. Okay, we're cruising right along here. You can also put an order by clause on there. So we can say select star from users, Order by email, so that's a column. Select star from users, order by email. And so that orders by email. Or we can change it by to name, and we can say descending. So that's the name and, and descending order. Sorting and selecting are good things that databases are really good at. So this is the summary of what I've told you. I so said the databases do create, read, update, and delete, CRUD. And we've done all those things, except we did create, delete, update, read. That's what we did. And that's the summary of SQL. And so you might be saying, why did I take so long to learn such a simple and elegant and beautiful language? Because it's not really exciting. It's a extremely simple language that's a, very predictable, and you're like, well, that's pretty easy. And it turns out that some of you may have been using SQL in situations, maybe with Microsoft Access or something, where you're actually typing this stuff and you, you just kind of typed it and you never realized that you were learning a programming language. That's why I like SQL and that's a very declarative language and it's very straightforward. It's much harder to learn. Than, I mean, it's much easier to learn um, uh, SQL than it is to learn Python because in Python you have to figure out how loops work and how iteration variables work and you'll notice there's none of that. And so, the, but the key is, is we've only started to understand the power. That, that's the simple ability to move around and update data and read data uh, randomly using, using uh, these simple sets of commands. But up, what next, we're going to look at how you do this uh, with data models and relationships and really multiple tables.